So here we are. We're back again uh, at home, but together. Uh, Danielle, do you want to kick us off? Okay, so I read Goldilocks by Laura Lamb. It is a sci-fi book. So I went on a journey for this spread the word across three different books. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and finally, I got a couple ch- chapters into Goldilocks, and I was like, this book is oh, no. just right. How long have you been sa- holding that book in? <laughs> I, I was wondering, that too. when did you think you're saying that? How long ago? <laughs> Despite increasing restrictions on the freedoms of women on Earth, this woman spearheads the first all-female mission to a planet called Cavendish. And it's an extrasolar planet in the Goldilocks zone where conditions are just right for humans to live. So anyway, she spearheads this all-female mission. And um, after preparing over like five or six years, this voyage that she sent six years building funds for doing the research for gathering the crew for they decided to oust the women and replace them with a crew of men you mean they don't get oil drillers and bruce willis is not on <laughs> <laughs> yeah they don't like it's, you know the guy that's sleeping with bruce willis's daughter <laughs> but the animal <laughs> crackers, <laughs> the animal crackers? Is that what <laughs> They hijack this spaceship. The ship is called the Atalanta. I don't know if you guys... Yep, Julia. She was the only female Argonaut from Jason and the Golden Fleece. Yes. Yes. She jumped jumped aboard the ship last minute, soon after they started the expedition, and she was like, I'm here, bitches, and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. So, like, there are things that I want to tell you guys so badly, but they were things that when I was reading it, I gasped, so I know I shouldn't tell you. Back to the things that I can talk about. One of the crucial things that I left out. So this is in the future. Earth is dying. There's wildfires. There's rising tides. And they need to colonize this new planet. It's because Mars is habitable, but not habitable to the point of Cavendish, which is like a second Earth. And I don't know if I've ever told you. I, I know I've told you guys this, actually. But space freaks me out. <laughs> So interesting. Fuck you, children. <laughs> yeah. She, they're like, we're going to have to go on a spacewalk. And I'm like, I'm going to have to go get some Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> so to wrap it up, I really loved Goldilocks. And I highly recommend it. It's pretty, I wouldn't say fast paced in the way that you would expect like action packed that fast pace. It has its moments, but it's like a fast paced, slow burn. Mm, you'd say it's plot driven. Yeah, plot driven with little sprinklings of big character dives. So yeah, I would highly recommend it. Okay, so I read a book called The Book of V by Anna Solomon. It follows three different women over in different periods of time. So so Lily, she's a contemporary story and she's in Brooklyn. She's living with her husband. She is the second wife of this man and they have a kid and her story just follows you know, domestic life at that time, at the, at the present, um, with, you know, interesting negotiations that happen in 21st century relationships. Vivian is the next narrator, um, and she is the wife of a senator living in D.C. It's like, I think it's like the 60s, 70s, and she's like a woman um, about town, like ladies who lunch type of crowd. But she was my favorite narrator. That time in history is so interesting to me, specifically from the vantage point of, I mean, of all women, because this is when um, the Equal Rights Amendment was being passed, um, and Roe v. Wade had just passed. And so that's where Vivian's story is kind of situated is, is people talking about these things and what they will or will not mean and how impactful they will or will not be. And then also, like, she's holding them like she's, has anyone seen their vagina? Not me. I'm going to look at it now with the mirrors. Uh, But she's, she's super compelling. Finally, the, the last narrator um, is Esther from the Bible. Um, Which interesting turn. Yeah. At first it could not be any different than any of the other narrators. And then, you know, of their similarities, um, the things they share, um, start to build. I like that. So it's like, like, wait, why is this story introduced? But then you're like, oh, I, I see. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And I mean, at, at the crux of it, they're all just these, they're, I mean, they're complicated women whose lives are for one reason or another, not entirely their own. So, and, and with the story of Esther, the uh, events of the novel are leading up to when she's sacrificed. And so the first few scenes you see her, for instance, are, are like in Persia and she's like in her little, a conclave of women um, all of whom like have to be shaved daily. Like that is seared into my brain is, as an image of, of things they have to do as a part of their ritual to be the right partner and the right object for the men around them. It's such an interesting book. It would be so good for book clubs. So that is, is... The, is the, the, the book of the... This one's coming out in May. The recipe for persuasion. I mean, I'll also desire that it's perfect. <laughs> um, Sonali Dev's second novel, her first one was Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors. So I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a theme, and it is Jane Austen, and it is food. <laughs> this one came out a few years ago, um, but I finally read it this year. And when you hold on to a book that you know you're going to like, and you're saving it for a time when you need it, that was this. And then um, this one's coming out this month, Recipe for Persuasion. And Persuasion is actually my favorite Jane Austen novel, and it's the least adapted one ever. So I was really excited that there was an adaptation coming out. And it does a really good job. You don't have to have read um, Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors to read this one, but the characters, in, they're like crossover characters. Based around this family um, in Southern California, the Rajes, they were actual royalty in India. Uh, and then they moved to California. These are both really fun. They are romance. They are the type of romance that's apropos of Jane Austen. They're more of a fade to black kind of romance. Um, so there's a lot of sexual tension that builds um, that you sort of see the end result of, but it's more left to the imagination, which I kind of like. So the premise of this one, Ashna, she has been trying to keep her father's restaurant alive. And she has this weird, it's a complex relationship with her father. He died many years ago before either of the books take place. Uh, he killed himself. He shot himself in the face. And she's the one who found him. He was an alcoholic, uh, verbally abusive. So yeah, that's like her parent life. And then in high school, she had a relationship that she kept secret from her family with Frederico Silva, who is part Brazilian, part English. And they met, um, bonded over soccer and their sort of like outcast status and fell in love. Um, but, and if you're familiar with persuasion, she was persuaded from marrying him by her father's disapproval. Um, there's something similar to that happens, but not exactly. Like, I think one of the things that Sonali Deb does really well with both of these books is she takes the original text uh, translates it into a realistic perspective for today. So, so they break it off and he goes off and becomes a famous soccer player. And she ends up going to cooking school, even though originally she hated cooking and is trying to keep her father's restaurant alive. Rico has injured his leg. So he's basically retiring from soccer. He intentionally tries not to think about her because it's this unresolved love of his life. Uh, so he digs a little deeper and finds out that she's going to be a contestant on a um, reality TV show on the Food Network. And then he calls his agent up and is like, get me on that show and make sure I'm her partner. And that's how they end up coming back together. <laughs> and so, and then there's also the whole like drama that is from the original story of like, this idea of a second chance, you feel like you let something go by you because of the influence of other people and as a young person, like a very young person. And then looking back on it from an older perspective, you're like, why couldn't I just stand up and like be who I was and do, do the thing that I wanted? Um, which I think mm -hmm. is what's really powerful about the original story of Persuasion, which is why I love it the most. Anyway, it, I think they're really, it's a great series. I'm excited about the Simpsons and Sensibility one, even though that's my least favorite Jane Austen book. <laughs> so thank you for joining us for our ninth episode of Spread the Word. Hopefully next month we can be in person. That might be jumping the gun. We'll see. We'll we'll feel it out. We'll see where we are. We'll evaluate. Yes. That's the week's approach. <laughs> yes. Um, Kristen and Julia, do you have anything to say before we wrap up? 
I love you. I love you all. See you on the other side. <laughs> Bye.